That's your comeback? <laughs> oh, 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 man! Stranger Things may have brought the 80s back into the spotlight, but it doesn't end there. Here are 10 foods from the 1980s that are weirdly making a comeback. Not even that cool in the 80s. Flavored popcorn. Ooh, vanilla flavored. <laughs> Now I kind of want to try one. While popcorn has been a popular food for many years due to its cheap cost and how quickly it can be made, it fell out of popularity during the Great Depression. The snack food did find its footing once more with the introduction of microwavable popcorn in 1981, which allowed families to make their own popcorn at home for a low cost. With the new ease with which popcorn could be made, it surged once more as a popular snack among many households. With the newly reinvigorated popcorn industry came the demand for innovations in the new quick-fire snack industry. We definitely need something new. To keep up with the demand for this fan-favorite snack and the consumer's wish for something new, producers started to experiment with different flavors added to the traditional taste of popcorn. These days, popcorn has seen a resurgence in popularity and has seen many companies take advantage of that popularity. From companies making individual seasoning packages to gourmet popcorn producers, there are plenty of choices for the everyday person who enjoys this crunchy snack. High C. Where's the high C? High C and Fluffernutters. High C is a fruit flavored juice drink that was originally made in 1946, though it was not officially produced and sold until 1948 after two years of perfecting the ideal recipe. Over the years, the producers of High C came out with all sorts of different flavors and types to keep their drinks flying off of store shelves. At the height of its popularity, High C came out with a drink type in collaboration with the popular 1980s cartoon based on the Ghostbusters movie High C Ecto Cooler. After a few years of heavy popularity, largely due to this collaboration and heavy marketing efforts, High C slowly declined in sales, and many people forgot about the beverage for the most part. I don't recall. In more recent years, High C has seen a resurgence in sales and a huge part of that is due to the fact that they brought back the popular Ghostbusters themed flavor, making a short term comeback. Though they did receive some backlash due to how hard it truly was for people to find and purchase the limited time release. They also re released it a second time, though it could not be purchased and instead had to be won via interaction with the official High C social media channels. While High C might not be the household name that it once was, it has seen a definite resurgence in popularity in recent years, largely due to some heavy marketing work, which has been an important part of High C's popularity over the years. Vianetta Ice Cream Cake I think everybody likes ice cream cake. Vianetta ice cream cake was originally launched by a British company in 1982. This layered product was a popular treat, though it was considered more of a luxury than other available ice cream products at the time due to its more expensive nature and fancier method of production. Often, it was served as a special family treat for important celebrations. While it enjoyed heavy popularity in the UK in its first few years of production, this unique dessert was eventually sold internationally. First introduced to North America in the late 1980s, Vianetta ice cream cake quickly became a popular novelty treat among this new group of consumers. It was also launched in cooperation with KFC and Pizza Hut restaurants, which helped it spread in popularity through North America. While its popularity waned over the years as the novelty of its unique layered shape wore off, it found a small resurgence in more recent years. Even though Vianetta ice cream desserts might not be a popular treat in North America anymore, it is still very popular in other places, such as Australia, New Zealand, Italy, Finland, and other places around the world. Pudding Pops I love jello pudding pops. Pudding Pops are another frozen sweet treat that were very popular back in the 1980s. They were first produced in the 1970s, but they didn't rise to the height of their popularity until the 1980s. Pudding Pops thrived heavily over the years, quickly becoming a household staple in many places. A less expensive and yet still delicious frozen treat, they were accessible to many households, which really helped it extend its reach as far as possible. Eventually, the frozen dessert was pulled from stores due to waning popularity, and the company claimed that the treat was no longer profitable for them. They did make an attempt to relaunch the treat in the early 2000s. Let's start again. 
Despite this attempt to launch their once popular item, they did not see the success that they had in the past. This was largely due to the fact that the recipe had changed and people found that the taste and texture was not what they remembered. And this drove the company to begin to pull the product from shelves once more about several years after the relaunch. While you may not be able to buy the official product from the original manufacturer in stores any longer, people are serious about bringing back their favorite treat from the 1980s. As such, there are plenty of recipes out there to make your own pudding pops at home, because they still stand their ground as one of the best things to come out of the 80s. Bread bowls. Could you put it in a big bowl? We don't have big bowls. Bread bowls are exactly what they sound like. For those who may not know, it is a literal bowl made of bread. Typically, you would serve chilies, stews, or thicker soups in them, such as New England-style clam chowder. They were invented a long, long time ago, but rose once more in popularity in the 1980s. Their popularity during the 80s was largely due to some restaurants who began serving their clam chowder in it. It quickly caught on and became a popular option at many restaurants. It's a very popular dish in Detroit, Michigan. The bread bowl put a fun twist on some common dishes. Eventually, the bread bowl fell out of style due to overuse. And while it was still used in restaurants and at home, it wasn't nearly as common or as popular as it had been. Recently, the bread bowl has found its footing in the market once more, largely thanks to the hard work of the folks at Panera who have begun offering it around 2018 in the majority of their restaurants. People once again began to fall in love with the bread bowl, and for the moment, at least, we are seeing a jump in popularity for the age-old treat. Lean Cuisine Lean Cuisine? I think I got a lean pocket around here somewhere. Going. These quick-ready meals made it easy for people to enjoy a more balanced microwavable meal. While some may question how healthy a microwavable meal really can be, the Lean Cuisine brand is actually held to a certain standard because of their name. Due to the usage of lean in their brand name, all of their frozen meals are legally required to meet FDA calorie restrictions, as well as restrictions on fat and cholesterol content. This accountability standard helps assure consumers that they are truly getting a healthier microwave meal than many of the other options available. Yes, it's true! Lean Cuisine enjoyed the height of its popularity during the first 10 or so years of its launch, adding different types of meals to its lineup as time went on. Despite the addition of different foods, they did slow down in overall popularity, though never enough to pull their product from shelves. Largely due to the fact that many people are extremely busy these days, these meals have been bouncing back. They've also added vegan meal options to appeal to a wider audience of consumers. While Lean Cuisine never truly left the market, the brand is making a comeback. Maybe not to the height of its popularity back in the 80s, but a comeback nonetheless. Hot Buttered Cheerios Cheerios, they don't got Cheerios. What else? While hot buttered Cheerios are not an official licensed product made by any producer, they were in fact a popular snack back in the 1980s. Quick, easy, and cheap to make, many kids who grew up in the 80s will remember them well. Also known as fried Cheerios, this snack was simply made by frying Cheerios in a pan with butter and enough salt to taste. A nice alternative to other salty snacks such as popcorn, hot buttered Cheerios can be made in a pinch if no other salty snack is available and you wish to satisfy your cravings. Sounds nice. The original recipe calls for just a bit of salt to be added to the mix as you fry the Cheerios in butter, but other things can be added to modify the original snack. Recipes that are widely available on the internet include such things as cinnamon, sugar, or garlic. There are also suggestions to use available variations of the cereal itself, such as taking the apple cinnamon flavored cereal and frying that in the butter for a taste reminiscent of apple pie. For reasons unknown, the snack fell out of popularity among many families, but has recently found its way back into the hearts and homes of many. While the recipe is rather simple, many versions of it can now be found online. Frozen yogurt. People love frozen yogurt. I don't know what to tell you.
frozen yogurt was officially introduced to the market in the 1970s, but at that time, it didn't find much traction among consumers. It was not until 1981 that the first frozen yogurt-specific shop opened its doors and kicked off the 1980s craze for the frozen treat. Frozen yogurt became popular due to growing popularity of finding healthier alternatives to everyday favorites, and people slowly began to realize that they could trade in their high-sugar ice cream for frozen yogurt options instead. Frozen yogurt offered not only options that tasted similar to ice cream, but also offered flavors that ice cream did not. It's genius, it really is. Opening themselves up to a wider market of consumers than the classic frozen alternative. Eventually, as the dieting craze began to slow, so too did the popularity of frozen yogurt. While it never truly disappeared, it no longer enjoyed the attention that it once had. In recent years, it has enjoyed a resurgence, and consumers began to once again flock back to the frozen option largely due to more frozen yogurt shops opening up, which offered more options than their counterparts in the 80s, as well as offering plenty of topping options ranging from candies to fresh fruit, so people could customize their choices even more than before. Fruit Roll-Ups Do you think we talk about our relationship enough? Yeah, do we have any fruit roll-ups? Fruit roll-ups were launched in the 1980s and heavily marketed, mainly aiming their marketing at kids, which meant plenty of TV commercials during Saturday morning cartoons. Originally, fruit roll-ups were marketed as a fruit-filled snack, despite the fact that there was little to no actual fruit or fruit juices used in the recipe. Regardless of this, fruit roll-ups were a popular choice by many parents as a lunch or after-school snack for their children. Kids widely enjoyed them, likely because of their fun colors, but also because of the high sugar content that makes fruit roll-ups less of a snack and more of a candy. I don't really care. After soaring popularity in the 80s, fruit roll-ups found themselves less popular among consumers as people began to realize that they were much higher in sugar and much less healthy than they had originally been led to believe. After a quick lawsuit over their claims of how much fruit was included, which was settled out of court, fruit roll-ups began to find their way back into popularity among consumers, who now purchased them with a better understanding of their true sugar content. Lunchables. Oh, cool. You got turkey and cheese Lunchables? I got pizza. Lunchables were originally manufactured in the latter part of the 1980s, marketed as a quick meal for kids when their parents found themselves short of time, after a market research study showed that the primary concern was not having time to make breakfast in the morning for their families and also pack lunches for their kids to take to school. Offering a variety of combinations that included lunch meat, crackers, nachos, and even miniature hot dogs, Lunchables has been a household name since their original release. After a few years of popularity due to their innovation, the Lunchables brand found themselves plateauing and even dropping a bit in popularity among many households. Okay, we're losing customers. Bye! They released a few more food combinations to encourage consumers to come back to their products, but that tactic did not work as well as they had hoped. What really launched them back into popularity was their launch of Lunchables-style meals aimed at adults. While these adult-oriented Lunchables were eventually removed, they continued to come back into popularity with a variety of new kits, including ones that have drinks with them and even Lunchable snack packs that are just snacks and not an actual meal. Got a blast from the past we forgot about? Let us know! And tap or click on another great video, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell!